Come on, look at this picture I found. Oh, was that you guys last Christmas? Last Christmas? I was like nine in this picture. Oh, well, I guess you look great. <laughs> <laughs> And I have water in my cup today. And I'm Leia. And I also have water in my cup today. How mature. <laughs> and you're tuning in to the, the Lamont, Lamont and Leia podcast. podcast. <laughs> Alrighty, Lamont. Today is my subject, my topic. Yes, <laughs> finally, finally, we got to a Leia topic. <laughs> Mine are few and far between, but I mean, whatever. <laughs> uh, so today, I want to tell you about this like hypothesis I've developed. Theory. Hypothesis. I'm going with hypothesis. Okay. Okay. So a <laughs> hypothesis is an educated guess, <laughs> right? Where a theory is a way of looking at and living, right? Or am I like tripping? I don't know, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I think we've touched on this before, but I'm not sure if it was like in the podcast or if it was just, you know, us having a conversation and we talked about it. Um, but my hypothesis, my theory, is that you can be a grown up. Who is mature and responsible or mature the, the, you can be a grown-up who is mature and responsible but you can also be mature and responsible without being a grown-up it sounds like I'm, I'm like really present it sounds like I'm presenting like a science project in elementary school <laughs> these are my materials this is a graph here showing my results <laughs> I used to love science projects. Right? <laughs> I would love to make one of those little trifold boards again. <laughs> you will when you have kids. When you and Patrick oh, have God. kids. <laughs> anyway. So a little, a little backstory on my theory hypothesis. And it kind of is like three separate situations that made me develop this or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so... Situation one, uh, thanks to social media, I'm able to keep up with a lot of like people from high school and elementary, which is nice. But something I kind of noticed is like just how grown up some of them look. Like they don't look old. I'm not saying anyone look old. I'm just saying they look like an adult <laughs> should look. Okay. And, like, so many of them are having kids or they're posting about how they, like, just got a mortgage or they're getting married or they're on their way to see their financial advisors. And, like, when I look at their posts and stuff, they just seem so much older to me. Like, but we're all around the same age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's very, very strange. Um, situation two is I have two younger siblings. Well, I'm the oldest of six. So I have a few younger siblings, but I have two that are pretty young. Um, I'm actually 18 years older than my youngest brother. So like I'm old enough to be his mom. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. I'm 18 or 19 years older than him. And even like the second youngest, if I had made some decisions as a teenager, I could be her mom too. Like that's how much older I am than them. Mm -hmm. And like, so when I talk with them, they treat me differently than they do my other siblings that are closer to their age. And I asked them about that when I was back home in California and they said, it's because I'm a grown up. <laughs> and what? Like Kavika and Jonathan aren't? <laughs> Amalia isn't? <laughs> I mean, they treat Kavika a little bit differently too, but not as much as me. And it kind of like goes down until, you know, the second youngest sister who's way closer to their age than I am. Mm -hmm. And it's so weird to me that they look at me and they go, oh, she's a grown-up. And they put me up there with the other, quote-unquote, 
old people, when I look at myself and I look at the old people, quote unquote, I do not identify with them at all. (laughs) Right, right, right. And then situation three is I turned 28 this year. Congratulations to me. So that technically that picture that you showed me was like a long time ago. Like yeah, like it was like twenty years ago almost. This this picture that I showed you is as old as Adam. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway, ever since I turned twenty eight, no one will shut up about how I'm almost thirty and like uh. my youth is fading and I'm getting old and blah 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 blah. blah. And, like, I've honestly been hearing this since I turned 25, but, like, wow. every single year since then, it's just been getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> I see. I see. I and see. And, like, I guess people think that 30 is, like, old or something. But then, Not at all. I know. And, like, I look in the mirror and I look at how I dress and how I carry myself and my hobbies and I don't see old, quote, unquote, like people tell me I'm supposed to <laughs> oh. but at the same but at the same time I like go and file my general excise taxes for my business <laughs> or stay on hold for 45 minutes on the DMV you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah so those are the three, the three situations that kind of like brought up this whole hypothesis of mine um which and is I, and I know I'm not like the only person who feels like this especially as a millennial, (laughs) which I'll touch on later. But um, I also know that this is not a shared experience among my age demographic. So my hypothesis reinstated for my science project um, is being mature doesn't mean you have to be a grown up. You can be a young person who knows the time and place when you need to be mature and do grown up things doesn't mean you have to do that all the time so lamont with that being said do you view yourself as a grown-up or are you a young person who knows how to be mature that's a that's a good question actually so i think it's all in the way in which you, I think this goes back to our conversation about beliefs and values. Mm-hmm. So my mom, I am 33, about to be 34. <clears throat> my mom had me and my siblings at that time. And, you know, like when you look up to your parents, like you always want to be grown, you want to be where they are and stuff. So in my head, I think, I honestly think I'm a grown up, but also I realize I'm a young person and I have mature moments. Mm -hmm. There are times I don't have mature moments and that's okay too, right? Um, Because I'm not expected or I shouldn't be expected to be mature all the time. Yeah. So um, as you were talking, Leia, and you're like, oh, people are telling me like, you're getting close to your 30s and the 30s death. Okay, I'm 33. So (laughs) three years ago, I had my 30th birthday party. And And he's alive. (laughs) Yeah, and I'm alive. (laughs) And to celebrate my 30th birthday party, I had a catwalk. And I walked into my 30s. Like all my other friends, they might have been a little bit younger or around the same age, but they walked down the catwalk. And I walked into my 30s like, I'm 30, I'm feeling good. I'm healthy, I'm, I'm alive. And actually around that time, I kind of wanted to do a campaign where I was like, this is what 30 looks like. And like a whole bunch of people that look like me and like my skin and stuff. And this is what 40 looks like. And it's not too bad. And this is what 50 mm-hmm. looks like. And 60, let me, let, me, let me back it up a little bit. So when I first started grad school, um, I had this beautiful, gorgeous, dark black teacher and I thought she was in her 30s. Like, oh, like, she got, a, she got a doctorate. She's in her 30s. She's living her life, doing, doing great, right? Turned out she was like 50-something. And when she told us her, their age, not very maturely, <laughs> I was like, stop playing. <laughs> I was like, I, I didn't believe her. I was like, stop playing. Like, you don't look... 50 I know what 50 looks like I'm not dumb like like you like you don't look 50 like I know 
they're healthy looking 50 year old people you look like you're 30 and i was like what 20 something at that time so i was like come on like are you are you trying to punk us right now where are the cameras <laughs> that was literally my response and she was like well thank you but no i'm 50 and i was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah certain people just look young and we will, will remain looking young mm-hmm. you know so what is it that you value do you value being able to handle the responsibilities that you believe you're able to handle or are you more like i'm older so what i say matters kind of mindset yeah for me i just like to have fun like and i don't like when people put restrictions on me doing stuff like i like to wear a harley quinn onesie every once in a while and I don't need people to tell me like oh but you're almost 30 maybe you shouldn't wear that I'm like you know what I'm gonna go file my taxes right now in this onesie (laughs) exactly so what is that onesie doing to deflect from your age like really nothing it's their biases their beliefs that like oh 30 year old people shouldn't be doing this you're not hurting anyone you're enjoying your time and you're still taking care of your business and literally taking care of your business. Like you're filing your taxes for your business. You're keeping it afloat. You're making sure everything's running right and smoothly. Mm-hmm. You're making all your appointments. Um, still conducting yourself professionally. So what is it in people or in ourselves? I'm pretty sure I'm guilty of this where like, I challenge people to be like, oh, like, you should think more maturely. Like, where does that come from? I feel like it's a, um, a n- notion that we grew up with watching older folks, seeing that they were serious all the time, and they were always busy doing something that we deemed, like, grown up. And I feel like it's just like, okay, well, that's how I'm supposed to act, but I don't want to act like that. It's boring. (laughs) Or like, oh, I don't want to act like that all the time. That doesn't seem like fun. (laughs) Right, right. So I think a lot of people, especially in our age these days, you know, are feeling kind of like me, like we're looking at what a a grown-up is supposed to be. And we're just like, I don't want to feel like that. I don't feel like that all the time. Like, let's not do that. (laughs) I'm going to go have fun. I'm going to enjoy myself. But then, you know, I also got to turn around and deal with stuff. Did I finish my thought there? I don't know. I don't know if I finished it. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, yeah, I just, I mean, when you, like, think back in, like, elementary school. Uh, Let's see. What's a teacher we shared? Mrs. H, not going to put on blast, but okay. you know who I'm talking about. Mrs. Okay. H, did you ever see her have fun? Like, you mean like, like laugh at a joke or... I mean, I'm just talking about like act like a kid. Like as a kid, when I would see her, she was always the authority figure. She was always serious. She was always do- like, of course she'd laugh at jokes. She's not a robot. Right. But, you know, but like I never saw her do anything young but at that she time jumped she jumped up once hmm? she jumped up once <laughs> yeah i know like for 30 seconds and she goes okay i'm done <laughs> <laughs> but like think about when we were in elementary school she was probably only in her late 30s right yeah but she seems so much older, right? Yeah, and as a kid, she just seemed so much older. And I like I never saw her have fun. That you know, as a child, what I perceived as what fun is. So it's just like I don't know if that has changed or if I just keep looking at people who act like adults and act like that, and I just go, Oh, you must be old. <laughs> I see. I think she could not afford to have childish behavior at all oh i mean she was also a teacher and a principal so yeah Yeah. but i mean so i think we weren't allowed to see that side of her Mm -hmm. um maybe if we were like her peers or closer to her age where we're invited to her home Mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure there was a side to her but like being that she was the principal and (laughs) a teacher at the school 
like and she had to be in charge of all the discipline and stuff like i don't think she could let that persona slip like because you you know how bad those kids some of those kids were (laughs) like if she was like to act silly (laughs) i'm pretty sure that would have just yeah been it (laughs) that's a that actually just made me think of something is it that people who are deemed the grown-ups or older are they kind of just have to hide that they are you know that they just kind of have to pretend like that all the time and these people who are around my age that I see as older is it just that I look up to them so like I'm not seeing I don't know possibly um for for miss h i i i kind of understand why the demeanor was how it was yeah there was definitely a purpose and it served a purpose and it served it well Mm -hmm. um for other people i I feel like people don't pretend like I feel like there's different parts of people and we are we get to see different parts of people and different people bring diff- different parts out, out on us like Leia you would be surprised of how dirty I am like I'm a nasty filthy pervert like I can be <laughs> only certain people bring it out of me like only certain friends who have like that mindset I know I can be free and not judgmental but when I'm with you like I don't think like oh Leia will get a kick out of this perfect joke it's more like oh like let's talk about this and let's talk about that and let's talk about this like but that's just the side that you bring out and inspire you know mm-hmm. um so I think there's just like different sides to us mm-hmm. so when something's missing like hey like this person seems mature all the time this person doesn't seem like they have a good time that they always have to be the adult um why why am i perceiving it like that or yeah yeah like so here's another example when i look at you i don't see a grown-up i see my friend lamont Okay, but like cool. I know that you have more experience in certain areas than I do. So if I need help with something, I'm gonna go to you and ask you. But I don't see you as like, oh, he's the grown up. He's the one in charge, you know, like stuff like that. But then I have a high school, I wouldn't say friend. We were not friends. Okay. <laughs> Girl I went to high okay. school with in my class. <laughs> she's maybe a year older than me, not much older but she is a nurse she has a child she has a husband she has an apartment she you know she has this life that to me seems like a grown-up so i look at her and i'm like oh she's the one who's probably in charge she's the grown-up you know i have to i mean i'm not gonna listen to what she says because i'm also an adult but you know in a situation if she said oh you need to do this i'd be like yes (laughs) ma'am gotcha um so i'm just wondering if it's like an authority thing right i also think you may look up to like her and like like hey like that's something i kind of want like i want a steady job i want a child i want a house um you already have it and you seem to be on track so yeah it's it's my thought on like this is what adulting is yeah really we probably should have called this segment adulting and what is adulting and what's not adulting um but who knows we'll we'll figure that out later but so let's let's go back a little bit let's go back so this segment is called hold on um, (laughs) i keep i'm on a different computer growing up getting older versus maturity yeah. yeah So growing up, getting older versus maturity. So what does growing up mean? If you're listening, this is the opportunity to type in what you think growing up means. Yes. Like right? how would you define what a grown up is? <laughs> so for I think me, that there's a difference between growing up and being a grown up. So we may have to change the title a little bit. But you know that so what is a grown-up? Let us know down in the comments. <laughs> yeah. So to me, a grown-up is a person who takes care of their responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Those responsibilities typically include their house, making sure they get to their job on time, making sure they're paying their bills. 
Um, if you're doing that to me, you are doing grown up responsibilities and you're mm -hmm. meeting those responsibilities. Maturity it, to me means, so let us know what you think maturity means. Yeah. But to me, it's understanding your way through a situation and having the wisdom to get through that situation mm. um, and stuff. Yeah. I mean, maybe. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I feel like this is so hard and I probably should have prepared better. Because, but, but well, well, by your definition, then I would be a grown up. Yeah. And, like, I don't see myself as a grown up. I see myself as a young person who knows what I need to do and can handle it when I need to. But for the most part, I'm just a young person. Like, I'm here, I'm having fun. <laughs> like, right. I don't see myself as a grown up. So I, I, would, I think I see you as a grown up. I think I see you as a person who is completely mature enough to handle her responsibilities, but still likes to have a good time and fun with her peers. And um, I feel like around maybe Daphne and Adam, you do come off a little bit more like bossy and strict because you are the oldest, one. So yeah. there's that. And then two, you are like older than them and so and like they're kind of in a mindset where like they don't get the gravity of the seriousness of some of the stuff that's going on in your family and so mm -hmm. you're trying to keep everything together yeah um so that makes sense why you would be a grown-up to me but you're still you right there's still yeah. a part of you that's like hey like no like i'm still young like i, I still have a lot to learn and so i think I think the notion is once we're grown or we're grown ups, we don't have that much to learn. And mm -hmm. I think we need to dispel that notion. Yeah. Whereas yeah. like, no, like we're grown up, we've, we've made it this far and there's still a lot more to learn exactly. to get through life. So what you're saying is age is just a number. Yes. <laughs> Aaliyah said it first. Age ain't nothing but a number. <laughs> I yeah, I can go with that one. I like that idea. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to be old, quote unquote old. I'm well, we'll be... we'll all be old eventually if we make it there. Some of us may not make it there, like Amy. <laughs> Bye, Amy. Oh, what? <laughs> all right, I can go with that. So it's all just a mindset thing. Yeah, it, it's mindset. So. At the end of the day, when you look in the mirror, are you pleased with who you are, what you accomplished, and are you ready to do it again the next day? You know, some, some days those are gonna be absolute yes. Some days they may not be a yes. But overall, overall, I think if you feel that way overall, you're on the right track and, and stuff. It's all a mindset. All right. Got anything to add, Lamont? I think it's time to take a break. All right, let's take a quick little break and we'll be right back. Lamont, we are both children of the 90s. Would you agree? I would absolutely agree. The 90s was a great time to grow up, a great time for movies and music. And yes, some of my 90s people, Will Smith, loved him. Sandra Bullock, loved her and her movies. Julia Roberts. Um, Destiny's Child was coming in from the 90s. Um, you had Aaliyah, Usher, Maya. <laughs> when Houston had some great 90s hits, of course, <laughs> Michael Jackson. The 90s was a great time. Like, the 90s was a great time. Now, most people, not most people, but a lot of people would say because I was born in 93, and so I was still a baby for most of the 90s, that I don't count as a 90s child. Mm. But, I mean, come on. And did, a you lot watch, the, did you watch Rugrats? Of course I did. Did you watch Rocco's Modern Life? Yes. Did you watch Angry Beavers? Yeah. Oh, oh my God, I love it. Did you it. watch Cat Dog? My favorite show. Okay, you're a freaking 90s kid. 
Tell those people to <laughs> shut their mouths. <laughs> Um, so I found a list of 90s kids stuff by a Facebook user named Erica Jordan. Um, and we're just going to go through it and look, oh, at some 90s, right look at some 90s memories and see how much we remember. All right. <laughs> so this is the first one. It is those little like fruit canister things that was filled with I think it was like almost like pixie stick stuff right yeah I was not allowed to have these I knew about them and I knew some of the kids who would have them but I just I was not allowed to have these it was just like that's too much sugar I was barely allowed to have pixie sticks honestly <laughs> I just yeah I, I did get those a little bit but like this absolutely not I know my mom yeah. was like no no she's like you're not just gonna drink sugar <laughs> <laughs> all right next one Oh my goodness. Ouch bubble gum. Ouch bubble gum. I loved these things. I don't think I was allowed to chew gum. Like I had to like ask for gum. So growing up in the 90s, like I had to ask for gum when I was ready to get rid of my gum. I had to like give it back to my mom. She would put it in the wrapper and like throw it away. Like and it was <laughs> sparingly and it was a treat. Like it was a reward and a treat. So Yeah, I would pretty much only get these when I went to grandma's house. <laughs> she would buy these for me. And I think they would just call they were called ouch bubble gum because they were in these like uh tin canisters and this is what actual band-aids used to come in before they came in like paper boxes they'd be okay. in these like tin canisters and that's why it was called ouch bubble gum because it was like the same canister that they use for band-aids interesting. interesting when did they stop putting band-aids in tin canisters though this next one is the l'oreal kids like shampoo stuff it looks like a fish or whatever i loved these stupid little things <laughs> yeah yeah i remember them being advertised like in the summertime lip, lip smackers, smackers. I, I feel like they still make lip smackers i think they do i think they do i just yeah, don't think i think yeah i think the containers look different so these are the, like the translucent sparkly ones that was like such a 90s thing was to put glitter in all like the clear stuff 90s and early 2000s everything was clear with glitter in it <laughs> but i'm pretty sure they still make lip smackers oh, oh a game boy color now that was like late 90s like 98 ish i was actually not allowed to have one um because my mom were, we weren't allowed to play video games or anything and i remember my cousin gave me one one year and she about lost her mind <laughs> oh my Lord. but i loved it i had a aqua blue one erasers always a thing. oh my gosh those fat lisa frank erasers on the top of pencils for sure those are coming back kids are starting to like them again but like the erasers are way more detailed now <laughs> than they used to yeah. be <laughs> so i hardly ever used the erasers when they were this big because... oh no i didn't either they're decoration yeah. <laughs> all right I oh still, god i, I things. still oh. eat tricks yogurt sometimes oh, disgusting we weren't allowed to but every time someone at school would give me one i'd be like why what the heck is this it's disgusting I... I love Trix yogurt, especially mixing the flavor, getting a new color. Oh, I don't know. I couldn't stand it. I, I, do, I do remember them, though, especially the little Halloween one right there on the bottom corner. I remember that container. <laughs> no, I, think, I, one. I think that year they were they were trying to get people to give it out for Halloween. Mm. I remember this game, kind of. What is this called? It was a cat and mouse or... So it's the it's that little like tarp rainbow tarp thing that you would hold in like gym class and like you'd either run under it or like yeah I have to chase someone or like sometimes we would put like a ball in the center and try and like bounce it and see if we could get it to stay in the tarp or whatever. Yeah, I love those things. They were really fun. I was so excited when it was the day to take those out. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember probably when I discovered that. I wasn't that good of an artist and <laughs> I had to do art again, but <laughs> yes. So it's those little um art packs that you get as a kid that has like those crappy markers that like never worked. Like they would work for like two lines and then they were dead. And then like 
colored pencils and the most terrible watercolors that there are, crayons, yeah. pastels, whatever that is. <laughs> um, Patrick was just like, I hated getting these. They always made me feel like, okay, I don't want to do art if it's going to be like this. <laughs> I never understood Mindsweeper. the game. I, I figured out Minesweeper in high school. You know who taught me? My first boyfriend. Not going to drop his name on here, but you know who I'm talking about with the mm -hmm. long hair. Mm -hmm. um, he taught me how to play Minesweeper, and I finally get it. I love it now. <laughs> yeah, no, I never knew how to play this game. Like, sometimes I would go really well, but like, okay, let's go here. <gasps> okay, I didn't explode. Let me go here. I didn't explode. Click, okay, click, let click, me click, go here. Yeah. <laughs> But like I had no idea how to play this. <laughs> bop it. I'm actually really good at bop it. I'm I love scared. bop it. Like I'm bop scared. it, twist it, pull it. it. And now they have like spin it and what else do they have? I don't know. Yeah. Pass it. <laughs> yeah. I was this this game always gave me so much anxiety. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. <laughs> Oh, of course, Pokemon. Pokemon, Pokemon. gotta catch them all. <laughs> love, I still love Pokemon. Original, original Pokemon are. Yeah. Okay, so I have a story for you. Okay. I was not allowed to watch Pokemon because why? They were pocket monsters. Monsters. And yep. that was against the Lord. Mm -hmm. Turns out that my mom didn't care about it being against the Lord or not because like after like I missed my whole generation of not being able to play Pokemon cards or watch Pokemon or do anything Pokemon, Ty and Diamond, my other siblings, I came over for a visit and they were watching Pokemon. I was like, why are you guys watching Pokemon? You guys aren't allowed to watch Pokemon. They're like, mom wants to watch Pokemon. I was like, mom, you have to watch Pokemon? She's like, okay, it's a cute little show, actually. I like it. It's like, mom, Pokemon is my generation. You robbed me of my generation. She's like, yeah, well, that's because I didn't want to sit down and watch it with you guys, oh but I like it now. Right? Right? I found out that day there were so many shows that I wasn't allowed to watch only because my mom didn't want to sit down and watch them. <laughs> <laughs> but she blamed the Lord in our religion. <laughs> yeah, my mom was very neutral about Pokemon. <laughs> oh, Walkman. With the CD Walkman. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. So I actually got both. I got the tape player. I had a tape player, and then I had the... Me too. CD. Yeah. It was great when I got to upgrade to the CD player. I was so excited. And I used to decorate mine, like, with stickers and, like, permanent marker and, like, write on it, because that was what the cool people did. <laughs> oh, my gosh. A VCR. And a VHS tape. Dude, I just oh. took a bunch of VHSs to the... um to the goodwill when i was back in california because we had so many and i was like we're never going to watch i kept a few though i f kept a few good ones and everyone's like favorite movies and whatever but for the most part i got rid of most of them i loved the smell of vhs tapes i don't know what it was they had this like very interesting plastic smell i just like <laughs> all the time <gasps> Lisa Frank. Yeah, so this was definitely girl toys. Ah, loved Lisa Frank. Still really into like that neon rainbow look. I blame Lisa Frank. <laughs> <laughs> trolls. I was not allowed to have trolls. Yeah, I wasn't either. And I think it's purely because my mom thought they were creepy. <laughs> She's like, I don't want that in my house. I think my grandma had one though. And I would always play with the hair and like do little hairstyles with it <laughs> well that was a lovely time down memory lane of things once popular which are now past <laughs> some of those things are still in style though and some of them i kind of still want <laughs> but yes what a wonderful nostalgic walk down memory lane um speaking of lamont why are millennials so nostalgic? Have you noticed? Know. Have you noticed that that a lot of people in our age demographic are very nostalgic for, you know, 
<laughs> things. I feel like people are just nostalgic because, um, like my mom's generation, like I would hear them talk about things that mm-hmm. were no longer relevant or we we deemed relevant at the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think we like just memories. Yeah, memories are always thing. strong. Um, but there are a lot of people that are saying that millennials are turning out to be like one of the more nostalgic like demographics um and some people would oh go ahead i was gonna say some people would argue that it's because there it's like it's escapism and like just another way the millennial demographic is avoiding growing up or responsibilities or blah 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 I would say we're nostalgic because our childhood was stolen from us. Well, a lot of us had to grow up too fast. Um, I like what Sophie Wallace from Grattan Street Press at the University of Melbourne says about that. Um, and then I'm going to read from her, her uh, article that she wrote. Uh, nostalgia is one of the ways we cope with responsibilities in the reality of our modern world. After all, with widespread precarious work, prolonged reliance on shared housing, and the rising mental health crisis, all disproportionately affecting younger people, aka millennials, it can be hard for many of us to feel like independent adults. According to psychologist and nostalgia researcher, Professor Christine Bacho, experiencing a sentimental yearning for the past is particularly likely during times of transition. Given millennials' permanent state of instability, it's only natural that we are reaching for familiar sources of comfort and reassurance. Moreover, as the first digital natives whose childhoods have been meticulously archived by the internet, ready for us to reconsume, we have unprecedented access to our past that the older generations simply don't have. With the tap of a button, we can peruse a nearly complete catalog of our favorite childhood movies and be instantly transported into their worlds or dredge up our angsty adolescent tumblr blogs and share our absurd trips down memory lane with our peers what do you think about her response i think that like really sums up nicely yeah that's a great way to look at it i do think it sums up everything really nicely from maturity to um getting growing or being grown up and stuff like it makes sense it's a way to cope like when things get hard um you look back so like i remember like when things would get hard for my mom and her friends they'd be like you remember when mm-hmm. blah 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 yeah. and they would all start laughing or giggling like oh great times i did blah 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 mm-hmm. and blah 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 so it makes sense that it's a coping mechanism for when things get hard and yeah. right now um things are hard things is tough <laughs> um just like sophie said um when things are unstable you want something comforting and usually something comforting is is like something nostalgic something from your past like that's why people have like comfort foods and stuff like my comfort food unfortunately is french fries (laughs) and that's just they make me happy like i used to have french fries a lot as a kid like when i you know had a bad day my mom would take me out and we'd go get like some fries or something so like that's just comforting to me um but you were trying to link it into what we were talking about and um it does you're right it does kind of like really sum everything up um i think there's a large section of people these days that don't feel like grown-ups like a me and don't see a grown-up when they look in the mirror and i don't think it's a bad thing (laughs) i don't think it has to be a bad thing it doesn't have to be a bad thing yeah even though there's a lot of people who would disagree (laughs) <laughs> it's it's not a bad thing as long as you're not looking at yourself thinking that you're not good enough or mm-hmm. you can't handle your responsibilities or stuff like that. If if you are having thoughts like that, please seek help. Mm-hmm. There's help out there. Um, but if you're just like, you know what, like I may not be a grown up, but like I got my stuff together. Exactly. Um, that's okay. I feel. Because like I said earlier, age is just a number, right? 
And as long as we're able to be mature and handle our lives responsibly, then we shouldn't feel forced to quote unquote, act our age that people tell us how we should be acting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but on the other side of the coin, if you want to act your age and be a grown up, do it. <laughs> More power to you. Yeah. I, I think as long as you're not hurting yourself or you're not hurting those people around you, um, or like judging judging yourself poorly or judging people around you, and that's really what you think you need to do, then it's okay to be serious and act like an adult and handle your business. Exactly. So all right. That's all I have to say. Lamont, do you have oh, anything right. else to add? <sighs> I don't want to grow up. I don't want to grow up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I'm good, Leia. All right. Um, let us know what you thought of our subject. What do you think about this whole, like, being a grown-up versus not seeing yourself as a grown-up? Leave us comments in the uh description or not in the description in the comment section if you're on youtube if you are listening to us on one of our many audio versions uh leave us a message on instagram or facebook or yeah yeah go do something Let so us guys know. <laughs> so leia has been posting questions that you can ask Lamont and Leia. So get those questions in because we will be doing an episode where we will be answering those questions. Exactly. So. Um, thank you for watching and listening. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Today's life lesson is growing. It's a part of life. Growing is not an easy process. Some lessons in life are certainly easier than others. And then there are some really tough life lessons. It's important to keep the hope. Keep the trust. Remember, you got this. Just breathe through the problems and the issues. Know that it is guiding you somewhere worth going. And if you can believe that... You can make it through anything. And that is today's life lesson.